a celebration again tonight, this time by the Mets. That's what the wild card has done for baseball. Bobby Valentine says it's no consolation prize. It's worth celebrating. And the fans agree as they come to their feet. Lockhart, the last hope for the Braves. Fastball misses, 1-0. and Lockhart, three fly ball outs in this game. The 1-0 to Lockhart. Fouled away, a ball and a strike. Has it ever happened before in baseball where one team celebrates on one night, the other team the next night? Both of them go to the playoffs. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes, two outs. They get a few days to enjoy it before the second season begins one week from tonight for the Mets in either San Francisco or St. Louis. Well, the Mets get to the playoffs as a wild card. And as we mentioned, it all starts anew. Playoffs right around the corner. Mets will get ready for the playoffs along with the Braves, the Giants, and the Cardinals. The Mets will have to wait to see where they, where they will be next week. But they win the wild card. They will celebrate, but they got more business. The business is the playoffs, and they know it. But at least they can enjoy the final win of the regular season that has significance, a lot more than they did last year. I mean, technically, of course, the wild card playoff game with Cincinnati was a regular season game, but the 162 game schedule a year ago literally went down to the final pitch. Now the Mets can breathe easy and smile for a few days. Bobby Valentine will give his regulars judicious rest between now and the end of the game on Sunday. Make sure everybody's in as best shape as possible for the division series opener. So the Mets have defeated the Atlanta Braves six to two. And they have nailed down the wild card. So the Los Angeles Dodgers, the only team with any remaining hope in the National League, will now play for them a meaningless game at home against the Giants tonight. But the Giants still trying to hold off St. Louis. And the Mets win their 90th ball game of the season. They're, they're 90 and 68. Bobby Valentine leading the Mets to the playoffs once again. He did it last year. And he does it again this year. So the Mets going to and as a wild card entry, and everybody knows, in order to win the National League Championship, the, uh, the roads lead through Atlanta. How about a celebration? We're talking about a celebration last night here at Shea by the Braves. Celebration tonight by the Mets. That boy, senor. Well, the Mets hope this is the first of four. Four celebrations. Celebrate getting in, winning the division series, winning the LCS, and winning the World Series. Somebody's going to have four of these. Charlie's handed him out. Charlie's hugging him and handing him out. He hands out morning passes on the road. He hands out champagne at home. That's the life. <laughs> Uh, Mike Piazza, who's found his stroke, seemingly, over the last 10 days or so. Now we'll probably get some time off. 
right through Sunday's game. Play a game here, a game there. Five or six innings here and there. And take a look at that last out. Armando Benitez with that splitter. Lockhart strikes out. The Mets win the wild card in the National League for the second straight year. Their 90th victory of the season. And Armando Benitez continues to dominate as a closer. Steve Phillips and Jim Duquette congratulating each other and the other guys in the executive suite here at Shea Stadium. And that's about right in terms of the type of on field celebration. I mean players tend to let loose a little bit more in the clubhouse but I think they've got this in perspective. A subdued celebration. Well for one thing it's been a foregone conclusion for a while that the Mets were going to get this wild card spot. And so to make it official certainly requires some stamp. But you've actually done it. And the animated Armando Benitez and most of the season he has been very very dominant. And Bobby Valentine brought him in his ball game with a four run lead. And the New York Mets have clinched the National League wild card. Six to two, the final tonight here at Shea. We'll be back with some of the post-game reaction in a moment. For the first time in 16 years, the New York Knicks prepare to go to battle in the Eastern Conference without their warrior Patrick Ewing. Still, his shadow loomed large at the Knicks' first day of training camp as talk of losing Ewing dominated conversation. Everything in life is about changes and new, new seasons, and we're in a new season literally and in a sense without him so we have to just move forward it's not about Patrick here anymore it's about this team and if we're trying to look backwards as we're trying to move forward we're gonna have a very difficult time to be as successful as we need to be while rumors of additional trades continue the Knicks insist this is the roster they will go with without Ewing the team now has a vacant spot in the middle not only that there are questions about how newly acquired Glenn Rice will fit in alongside Latrell Sprewell and Allen Houston. Last season with the Lakers, Rice complained about not getting enough shots. So will he get enough looks with two others occupying the same position? I can uh, help those guys become much better players and they can also help me and uh, it's a different offense. Uh, I'm going to get a chance to do the things that I'm, you know, I like doing, running off screens, posting up a little bit more. So it's going to be fun. Nick players also want to set the record straight. Patrick Ewing criticized them for not calling after the trade. But his former teammates say Ewing knows what he meant to them. Hopefully he knows. If not, then, you know, I will get a chance to talk to him once things settle down. But he knows how much he meant to us and especially to, to me. Clearly, the Knicks' most glaring weakness is rebounding. Last season, even with Ewing, the Knicks struggled on the glass. This season, they'll need to rely on new center Luke Longley, who's out for three to six weeks with an injury to his right knee. But the big question is, even with a healthy Longley, do the Knicks have what it takes to battle on the boards, especially against a revamped Miami Heat front line? I'm Elise Hart for the National Sports Report. Elise, thank you very much. The Sixers got the year the Mets were born because the Giants moved west. Bobby V knows all that history. All square, game three, top of the point, no score. Bobby Estelea changes that. 0 for 9 in the game. The base hit off of Rick Reed. Ellis Burks comes around to score, and the Giants are on top 1-0. Later in that fourth inning, still 1-0 Giants. Two on two out for Marvin Bernard. 0 for 6 in the series. He gets the base hit to right. Estelea comes around and scores. 2-0 Giants. Dusty happy with what he's seeing there. Sandy Koufax at the game. Four career no-hitters. Russ Ortiz no-hitting the Mets through five. Sixth inning, one on. Daryl Hamilton breaks up the no-no with the Mets' first hit. First and third, New Yorkers with nobody out. And Timo Perez coming to the plate. Perez, I mean, is he Melvin Mora or what? The base hit to left. Mike Bordick scores. Mets on the board. It's 2-1 Giants. Later in the sixth, Alan Embry coming in to pitch. Base is loaded, one out for Robin Ventura. 
smashes it to Kent, turns the four, six, three, double play. Russ Ortiz, happy that uh, Embry bailed him out. Giants still need it 2-1. Bottom of the eighth, 2-1. Giants run on first for Lenny Harris. Grounds it to Kent at second. He goes to Aurelio for one, over to Snow. Harris safe at first. Oh, Kent can't believe it. So close, Brian. Yeah, let's take another look at this. Lenny Harris getting down the line, and it looks like the ball beats him there, but Brian Gorman calls him safe. That's a big play in the inning. That's not bang, bang. That's just bang, huh? After Harris stole second with two out, Edgardo Alfonso at the plate. Rob Nen in the eighth inning for the first time since July 2nd, which was the last time he blew a save. Double to left from Alfonso. Harris comes around to score. We are tired at two. Top of the ninth, one-on-one -on -one out. Barry Bonds against John Franco. The duel of the men who played the most games. Active hitter and pitcher without a trip to the World Series. Franco wins it with a strikeout. On to extra innings. Top of the tenth. Felipe Crespo at the plate. Runners at first and third and two out. But Armando Benitez gets him to fly to center to end the inning. Oh, John Franco happy there. Bottom of the 11th. 2-2 game. Two on. Nobody out for Benny Agbayani. Yeah, Benny's up with a chance to move the runners over. Nobody out. Going to try to put the bunt down. Fouls off strike one. Tries the bunt and pulls it back. Fastball on the, on the outside corner. Strike two. And then he ends up flying out. So he doesn't get the job done. Doesn't move the runners over. Doesn't get, don't get the job done. And he's frustrated going back there to, to the dugout. Now Jay Payton comes up. Rodriguez is just going to pound him with fastballs. Fastball's in. That's a broken bat there. Another fastball in. That's another broken bat. Fastballs, fastballs, fastballs. It goes away off the plate with a breaking ball. Then back in with a fastball. Another broken bat. Peyton's battling. He knows he's going to see fastballs. Rodriguez, another fastball, jams him. Fastball away. Peyton has a little bit better swing. Fouls that off, and then he goes upstairs. Blows him away with a 96-mile-an-hour fastball. Bases loaded. Todd Pratt up. Lazy fly ball to center field. Ends the threat. The Mets spoil chance in 11. About a 40-pitch inning, though, for Rodriguez. Top of the 13th, two on, two out. For Barry Bonds. And Rick White gets Bonds to pop it up. Once again, Bonds leaving a runner in scoring position. Bottom of the 13th, 2-2 game. Nobody on, nobody out for Robin Ventura. Grounds to second. Jeff Kent, the great diving stop, and gets Ventura at first for one out. The next hitter, Benny Agbayani, against Aaron Fultz. Goodbye. See you later. Drive home safely. The walk-off homer by the Hawaiian Punch. The Mets bench goes wild. That's my man, he says. Take another look at the swing. Agbayani knows it's gone. I like the bat flip. Chucks the bat into the air. Mets win a dramatic game 3-3-2 and take a 2-1 series lead. Shades of the last postseason game at Shea. Five hours and 36 minutes, 15 inning grand slam single by Ventura. This one took 5-22. The Mets bullpen seven scoreless innings, allowing just four hits. The Giants leave 16 on base before Benny circles them with the game winner. And he's been one of our real key players all year long. And, um, you know, he had that first and second no out situation and he was re really felt uh, like he let the team down. And um, he was kind of pasted in that dugout just hoping to get another chance. And uh, when he got it, he made the best of it. Some of my teammates, you know, John Franco, you know, Turk Wendell and, you know, Al Leiter, they just said, go up there and beat a man. And, you know, I knew the wind was blowing out pretty hard out there so you know I knew the ball once the ball got up in the air he had a good chance Rick White just geez I mean getting bonds at the end there and uh, you know throwing those strikes low and away getting his breaking ball over for strikes um, you think he has been in the playoff situation uh, for the last 10 years that's what we get paid to do you know we, we, we got to come in and keep the game close and, and uh, throw strikes and you know everybody knew that when it's their time it's, it's your time to go in and get the job done and, and we feed off each other and you know, right now we're just feeding off each other really well. In the 13 postseason games the Mets have played over the last two seasons, five of those 13 have gone in the extra innings, and the Mets have won four of the five. Can you name the winning pitchers? How about Franco and Dotel last year, Benitez and Rick White this year, the bullpen's ERA, just over two then. Bobby J. Jones and Mark Gardner will meet tomorrow. More on that. To ride the Mets roller coaster, but if you've got a weak heart, forget it. Last five postseason wins have come in the last at bat, including Saturday's five-hour, 22-minute saga won by Benny Agbayani's smoked home run. Said Giant skipper Dusty Baker, it was so long I didn't know what inning it was. It was the 13th, Dusty. A couple of former college teammates at Fresno State towing the rubber Sunday. Giants Mark Gardner, Mets Bobby J. Jones. The Mets win. They go to their second straight NLCS. 
Barry Bonds didn't look worried, but top one Bobby Jones wrote the mercury up on Barry. Bonds, 494 career homers, but only a 202 career postseason batting average coming in. Bottom one, two outs, Mark Gardner facing Piazza with two strikes. Home plate up, Brian Gorman caught on a ball, close pitch. Full count, Piazza walks. Gardner needed a hug. And he needed some help because next hitter, Robin Ventura, just one for 12 in the series. Ventura, booyah! Two-run shot. Second career postseason home run. Said Ventura of Gardner, he's an aggressive pitcher who tries to jump ahead. Top four, two zip, two outs. Jones hangs up on Bonds. Jones set down the first 12 giant hitters in order. All this from a guy who was one and three with an ERA of over 10 after eight starts this season. Bottom four, Todd Zeal up the middle. Jeff Kent, holla! Great play by Kent. He's also hitting 375 this series. Top five, Kent representing. Over the glove of Ventura and to left. Kent has a double. First hit for the Giants. Dusty Baker said, I figured we would pop one sometime. Same inning. Two outs after two walks. Sacks Jack for pitcher Mark Gardner. Facing his former Fresno State teammate. And Gardner pops it up to Edgardo Alfonso. G-Men trying not to lose th three straight. They haven't done that since August 8th through the 11th when they lost three straight to the Mets at Shea. Bottom five, Edgardo Alfonso. Two on. You heard. The guy who had the home run in game two into center. Jones scores. Timo Perez scores. Edgardo, a lifetime 246 hitter in the postseason. This postseason hit in 278. Jones was flowing. Jones retired the side, three up, three down in every inning but the fifth, facing Russ Davis with two outs as smooth as Jill Scott. You better back down before you get smacked down, you better chill. Jones perfect in eight of nine innings, top nine, two outs against Bonds, lights out. First complete game one hitter that ever clinched a series in postseason history. Bonds, just three for 17 in this series. He said later he was definitely bummed. Mets win at four zip. Bobby Valentine looks like a slit watermelon. He's grinning so hard. This was the sixth complete game one hitter overall in postseason history and the first since Boston's Jim Lonborg did it in the 1967 World Series. All this by a guy who was left, left off the postseason roster last year and was sent back down to the minors in June. You remember when the Baja Mans who let the dogs out blared throughout Pac Bell Park when San Fran clinched the NL West? It blared for the Mets at Shea on this night. I've had a tough year, and, uh, you know, to come through and, uh, you know, help my team to move on, it's, it's a great feeling. This textbook pitching, I mean, took a little off, was able to put, put some on, a you know, big curveball today. I mean, you know what, he doesn't throw 95, he doesn't light up the guns, but he's a pitcher, and uh, when he's successful, that's what it's all about. Bobby's earned everything he's done. He's a, he's a pro. Look it up in the dictionary, and uh, you'll see his picture beside the word pro. He knows what he has to do. Jeff Kent said they're a better team, but too bad the best team won today. What the hell happened? Mm. Unwilling to take their uniform off because we didn't believe that we were over yet. And, and, and that's those signs of going up against the pitcher who's just throwing strikes. Mm -hmm. Because you go up to the plate and you're going, well, why can't I get a hit off this guy? They won. That's all you can say. They won. Good luck to them. Just try again next year. That's just what it comes down to. You know, Bear is disappointed, but to his credit, he stood at his locker room and answered every question every reporter had. Bobby Jones becomes the seventh pitcher to allow one or fewer hits in a complete game in postseason history. Bill Bevins lost his game in 1947 when the first hit won the game with two outs in the ninth. Jones' gym comes on the 44th anniversary of the only postseason no-hitter. That was by Don Larson. Now to the end of Oakland. The Yankees came flying out of the gate in the fifth and deciding game of their division series last night. June 1983 for relievers Neil Allen and Rick Ownby. It escalated when a St. Louis disc jockey called the Mets pond scum and it climaxed when these teams fought a virtual three year war for dominance in the National League East. These franchises, these cities do not like each other.
This is mostly a World Series matchup. 1888, New York's first World Series win, Buck Ewing's Giants over the St. Louis Browns. 1926, Grover Cleveland Alexander strikes out Tony Lazari. They made a movie about it. 1928, Lou Gehrig slams four homers in a sweep. 42 and 43, the Cards and Yanks trade five game victories. And in 1964, Bob Gibson brings down the curtain on the Yankee dynasty. But for three seasons in the 1980s, the Mets, led by ex-card Keith Hernandez, and the Cards, led by ex-Met executive Whitey Herzog, were as bloodthirsty a rivalry as baseball had and produced the National League champion each season. The 1985 Mets led St. Louis by half a game in the old NL East as late as September 13th. Then Jack Clark and the Cardinals reeled off 14 of 15 to lead by three on October 1st. The Mets arrived in St. Louis, won one zip on Daryl Strawberry's homer off Ken Daly in the 11th, then 5-2 to two for 20-year-old Dwight Gooden's 24th win, and suddenly they were within a game with three to play. But rookie Vince Coleman's two-run single and the relief of 37-day veteran Todd Worrell led St. Louis to a 4-3 victory that virtually eliminated New York. In 86, the Mets ran away with the division. The cards were third, 28 and a half games back, in large part because the Mets beat them in each of their first eight meetings that year. But in 87, they joined the battle anew. St. Louis led the Mets by nine and a half in July. But by September 11th, the Mets had crept to within a buck and a hay. Strawberry had hit another massive key homer. The Mets led 3-0, and Ron Darling was no hitting the cards, and the great arbiter in the sky thumbed the Mets out, literally. Diving for Vince Coleman's bunt in the sixth, Darling, the only Mets starter all year who had not been hurt, ripped ligaments in his pitching thumb. The no-hitter and his season were over. But the Mets still led 4-2, two, two out, one on. Closer Roger McDowell with two strikes on Terry Pendleton. A half a game deficit, one good pitch away when Pendleton unloaded a titanic game-tying homer. One of only 59 homers hit that year by Cardinals other than Jack Clark. Cards won in 10 and virtually won the division that night. With the coming of three divisions, the New York-St. Louis Eastern rivalry ended, but not the enmity. This year, the Mets reeled off six straight wins versus the Cards, but here at Bush on September 1st, Jim Edmonds homered to beat the Mets in the bottom of the ninth. Then on the second, ex-Met Fernando Vina singled to win it in the bottom of the ninth. Then on the third, Edmonds hit another game-ender, and the Mets had been swept. Okay, it wasn't Babe Ruth hitting three homers at Sportsman's Park in Game 4 of the 26 series, but it'll do. All right, let's talk about the practicalities of that last. Rick Wilkins will bat in the number four spot and hit with two out, nobody on, facing Hampton. Hampton saying he was ready to pitch the game of his life before this game five. He has done that. No runs, only three hits. Seven to nothing Mets, ninth inning. One ball, one strike. Hampton the winner in game one. Seven shutout innings. Trying to throw a three hit shutout here in game five. Three balls and a strike. Good sign there and a great sight. Jay Hampton appears to be all right. Uh, Jay Payton, I beg your pardon. Hampton with a count of three and one. For the first time 
since 1986. The Mets are going to the World Series. of this night gets away from us. Congratulations to these Mets and Tim McCarver. Congratulations to these fans here at Shea Stadium who were tremendous with the way they acted here tonight. Let's go down to Steve Lyons. All right, Bill, thank you very much. I got Robin Ventura here. He played a lot of baseball. I've watched you play. I played with you, but when you scored and you came off the field, I've never seen you so emotional before. job that he's done with this club since he's been here. He, you know, he's done a great job. I think he, uh, he he rests guys and he plays a lot of guys. And haven't been in the American League so long and National League, uh, guys on the bench have to play. And you don't always like it, but he's able to he's able to do it and he does a great job of doing that. No way did you guys want to go back to St. Louis. Hampton comes in and absolutely shuts him down for two games in this series for you guys. Yeah, I mean, he's done an unbelievable job. I mean, our pitcher is the reason why we're here. And, uh, you know, we just score enough offense to get going, and, but our pitchers are the ones that do it. You're going to the World Series. What's that feel like, man? That feels awesome. I can't believe it. All right, go celebrate with you guys. All right. All right, Joe and Tim, we'll send it back up to you guys. All right, Steve. Sometimes Bobby Valentine is called Top Step Bobby, a guy who has taken his shots for 
getting on the field time after time. Interesting to note that he stayed in the dugout while his players celebrated on the field as they take a victory lap around the field here at Shea. Joe, I was in a Cardinal uniform in 1969 when the Mets clinched the pennant against the Cardinals. And I can't remember it being this big. Let's go back down to Steve Lyons. All right, got another one of the heroes here for the Mets, Benny Agbayani. And Benny, boy, this is a long way from AAA a couple years ago, isn't it? Yeah, it is, you know. I worked my butt off, you know, just to be in this place and to make my dreams come true. One of the guys that always believed in you was Bobby Valentine. He gave you the opportunity to play for this team, and you certainly didn't let him down. Yeah, you know, he gave me the opportunity, and he believed in me, and I wanted to show that, you know, he was right, and I had to go out there and prove myself. What was the difference in this series for you guys, swinging the bat so much better than you did in the divisional series? You know, I think, uh, you know, when we went to the divisional series, I think we were just was getting ready.